So it is Monday morning and I am down in my basement right now and um, I'm going to make some sun catchers. So I just thought I would show you how I make the sun catchers, like a step-by-step -step process. So what I first do is I get my area ready, so I'll show you that first. This is my area where I make stuff at. Um, I have this like black mat that I lay the molds on and then I kind of put all the flowers that I want to use around me and then I go and look at all the flowers that I have on the table and see if I need to grab any more. So I know that I pretty much already grabbed like um, pretty much everything that I want to um, use in the sun catchers. So I don't think I will need any more things actually. I take that back. I gotta grab, I'm gonna grab some uh, um, sunflower, that orange. I just love that orange, you know? Okay, I just dropped a whole bunch, but I'm just gonna grab down one. So that's like a sunflower. Usually it's like huge when we hang it up and then it dries into just this little thing I can fit in my hand. So I wanted to grab this, but then when I was up here, I seen this, which is kind of cool. Looks like it dried really great. I gotta show you this. That dried really good, that's surprising. Wow, what a cool color purple. And it's really dry, so let's let's try that too. I just wanna try it, because this is a new one for me. I've never um, dried that before. This uh, Strawberry Fields um, Gum Farina, it's kind of like a reddish, so I'm gonna try that too. It's just like a silicone uh, mold. I think I have four of for the butterfly shapes. And the butterfly shapes are uh, newer for me. I just started making the butterfly shapes like a few weeks ago and um, they're turning out to be a really good um, hit at the market. So what, I'm, what I do is I just kind of go through and you know, kind of get them cleaned up a little bit. Sometimes from uh, the flowers falling and stuff, they like will get a little dirty see there's like a flower in there there's something in there a little black thing so I kind of just you know go through and use my shirt <laughs> and get them all kind of like cleaned up so they all are like you know nothing in them this black mat is like a silicone it just um, helps me for when I pour the resin it doesn't make like a huge mess this is a new one I've never poured this one before um, it is a moon, well they're all moon, I got four different kinds of moons, which I, I thought was kind of cool. I'll have to get those little, those two little black things are Solosha, um, little seeds, but anyway. Okay, so I got a kitty on a moon, <laughs> I thought that was so cute. So a kitty on a moon I'm going to do for the first time. Um, a wolf on a moon, isn't that cute, howling at the moon? <laughs> Um, a little fairy, like a little fairy holding a little star wand. Thought that was kind of cute. And a unicorn. The unicorns are um, kind of popular. We I do like unicorn necklaces and stuff at the market, and the little girls seem to really like them. So I thought, well, I'll try that one too. So I'm kind of excited to pour those new ones. <laughs> and this one's kind of cool. It's got like a shape of uh, like kind of jagged on the sides and then a hole in the middle. Uh, the heart ones sell pretty good. They're a little smaller than the other size, but um, people really love that, the heart shaped ones. And then we have two different kinds of circles. One circle is kind of like a, it kind of has like a beveled, I guess, edge around it. Um, this one is five inch, it's, it's good, good size. And this one sells pretty good too at the market. And then there's another shape of a circle. It's like a four inch. It's a little smaller than that one. Um, and this one people seem to like too. All right, now for the fun part. <laughs> so I just grab um, whatever flowers we want to use. These are all Solosha um, and they're completely dry. And um, so I did, what I do is I just take like, I just rip one off like that and then put my pile back or sometimes I usually will put it in my lap because it's just easier for me to you know work out of my lap um, and then what I do is I just will go in and separate all of these uh, solosias off there the, all the ones that are like little like that I just 
lay down in the mold. Um, so the little ones, I just go like this, lay down in the mold, wherever. And then like this big one, if you notice, half of it is past bloom. So I will not use the past bloom ones. So I just kind of pick off where, you know, it's not past bloom and not use the past bloom one. Use the good, you know, use the good one that is a little bit more brighter. Oh, there is one on there too I missed. That one looks good. And then anything that I don't want to use, like that past bloom one, I just throw it on the floor and then I sweep up later. It kind of takes a while. It's a very time consuming process. Um, I'm gonna do 20, I have 20 sun catchers right now on our um, black mat. And it takes me about, I would say an hour and a half to put flowers in. And then it takes me another probably, I don't know, hour over maybe over an hour to mix up my resin and um, get them all pushed down so it it's kind of time consuming but i don't mind it and i i do it you know every week so i'm kind of used to it and i i enjoy it it's it's pretty fun it's relaxing um so it's just kind of fun to see the flowers and um see how they all turn out a little different so this week I have, we have night market on Thursday this week. So I knew I needed to pour a little heavier than normal because we have night market and then um, you turn around, you know, on Friday and get ready, like cut, bouquet, get ready for Saturday market. So you don't really have a lot of time um, to pour uh, after like, cause I have to be, Today's Monday, and night market's Thursday. We leave at two, so you kind of have to be done pouring by like Tuesday, and have everything ready on Wednesday because you're leaving on Thursday. So I know that in my head that I have to pour Monday and Tuesday this week in order for me to have enough stuff for um, market, uh, night market, and Saturday market this week. So I was like, I better get down here and start pouring because I know that it's gonna, um, you know, it takes a minute to dry. I let the sun catchers dry 48 hours, two, two full days and then I'll drill them. So it's Monday, I won't drill them out until uh, Wednesday. And that'll be perfect timing because, you know, then we'll go to the night market Thursday. The status is really pretty in them. There, I got, I think one, two, four, four different kinds. There's this one, white, blue, there's like an apricot color, and a yellow. I usually just start with one color, so I'm just gonna grab like a, you know, a um, little clump of this like pinkish one, and then just lay it down there, okay. And then I take it like that-ish, <laughs> just a little thing, and then just drop it down in the, in the mold. So I'll just do that, put that in all of them. I got a little pink status in all of them. Now I'm gonna do that with all the rest of the colors. <laughs> so far we got Celosia and status in there. And now I think maybe we should put some lupin in. This is really cool. It's like a um, perennial, it dries great. It's like a really cool blue and white. So I usually just start from the bottom of the um, stem and just kind of peel them off. I'll show you what it looks like in my hand. <laughs> Oop. That's what they look like in my hand. And then I just kind of go like this and sprinkle a little bit in of each one or in each one. And then I just keep doing that, grab a little handful, a little clump of them in my hand. And then sprinkle. So, okay, now next I'm gonna do, um, let's do roses. So I just got like a clump of roses. These are just knockout roses from my um, bush out, out in the yard. And then I just take a few petals of, whoop, I just blew one off. 
I just take like a few petals of them like that and then again sprinkle it in just in the um, sprinkle it in I take the head then I take all of them off like that then sometimes um, there's brown around the bottom and I don't like that so I grab my scissors <laughs> one moment please and I don't know if you can see probably not but it's a little I don't know where my lens my camera lens is a little brown I just go like this with my scissors and cut the bottom so when I sprinkle it there's no brown at all on them and it's just all beautiful color so we'll do that for the roses I already did that first one I just pinch a rose thing off, cut the bottom just in case it's brown. Some of them aren't, some of them are, but I just kind of make sure to do it on all of them because I don't want to have to go back and pick, pick through if there is brown on them. Now let's do some hydrangea. So this is just a little clump of hydrangea, um, endless summer that we cut off the bushes in our yard this past summer. And um, so I just like take one uh, little clump, you know, like that. And then I just kind of break it apart and sprinkle it in um, like I did the other stuff. So I just kind of break it and then sprinkle it in like that into the, into the mold. The hydrangea is one of my favorite ones to use in the resin because it's really cool color like the blue color and it shows up really nice and um, I just love it we don't have that much of them so I always try to think of that like I kind of have to use it sparingly because um, I don't have as much hydrangea as I do like straw flower, status, celosia you know this one I'm going to try to use like a full head of it in there I can't really seem to use like full heads of stuff very much because it just doesn't press down very good in the resin mold. I try my best at you know doing it, but most of them just won't just won't work because they're not pressed. They're just dried. They're not like flat, you know. But I don't really have the space to press them all. Like I I don't even know how I would begin to try to press these flowers. It's it would be it'd be quite the process. Let's do straw flowers next. So I just have some yellow ones right here. So I just pop off a head like that and then just rip it apart like that and then sprinkle it in, <laughs> in the mold. So with Cleome, I just kind of do that same thing. Cleome's kind of cool. Um, it shows up really good in the, in the resin. And I try to like keep it on the stem like that. I don't know if you can see it. So it's like on the stem. It looks kind of cool still on the stem. So I'll just kind of rip off one, you know, one little stem and put it in there. This, I'm just going to rip off all that pink. See all that pink and just kind of lay it in there wherever. I really like the Cleom too for resin stuff. I love the... I don't know, I just, I personally like like the hot colors, hot pink, hot, they show up really good, like the neon, which is kind of fun. But I mean, I like, I like the earthy looking ones too, like broom corn, it is pretty cool. I don't have any broom corn ready um, to put in these sun catchers. They're not all the way dry, I gotta really make sure they're extremely dry before we use them, or they will lose their color. I learned, <laughs> I didn't know that, and I just, recently learned that that they have to be extremely dry um so i don't have broom corn yet but i will in a few weeks and i cannot wait to put sun catchers or to put broom corn in like all the sun catchers <clears throat> this is kind of cool it's a stilby um is it a stilby yeah it's a stilby so that's kind of cool it's like super fuzzy and uh that one looks kind of neat in resin, so I'll be I'll put that in some of them. 
These were the um, sunflowers that we, when we got down, they like fell down. But this is what the sunflowers look like when we dry them. Super cool orange color, and it really, I think, adds a nice pop to the um, sun catcher. So I love, I love the orange in, in there. That, that's a Cleom. Just, I just took that one up. So I'm gonna try to put some orange in, hopefully all of them. Also in my hand is some blue uh, salvia. Whoops, one fell. So I'll put some blue salvia in too. Oh, this was a really cool um, color orange, peaches orange straw flower that I did new this year. So this is actually my first time using this color straw flower. So I'm pretty excited to see what this is going to turn out like. The aster, they're very, very, very fragile. And um, once you like basically touch it, they fall apart. So what I do with the aster is I just kind of grab it. And then there's a whole bunch of like white fluff stuff at the end. I don't use that. So I cut that off, all that white fluff stuff. And then I'm left with just pretty pink petals. This is pinkish white petals. And then kind of just sprinkle it in like that. So I just grab some, cut, and then sprinkle. Uh, red strawberry fields gumfrina that we just pulled down earlier I'm gonna use that and then this I don't remember what it's called but we tried that um, for dry and it, and it dries great so I want to try to use that I love that purple color I don't think like a whole head is gonna go in there it's too big like it'll just poke out so I'm just gonna rip off the leaves or the yeah petals and put it in there oh my gosh I love that Wow that's pretty and then I had a few more um, sunflowers. I thought I'd just throw those in there quick. And then we'll do that gumfrina. So this is a new one for me. I've never used this gumfrina color in, um, in dried stuff. So we'll see what we think of it too. Um, it's, it's okay, it's a little white, more white than I was anticipating. But when I rip it open, it's kind of like, see all that white, which I guess, which is fine. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Okay. <laughs> I just am like, like total color, but <laughs> it's fine. So we'll sprinkle some of that in. And then I try to like look at them too and be like, okay, does it need more orange? Does it need more pink? Does it need more purple? You know, and try to get it. To where it's like got a whole bunch of different kinds in it and not just like um, light on something. I feel like I might need to add some more celosia to them. So I'll just go in and add wherever I think that it's gonna need some. That one's a nice big one. I don't think I'm gonna even put, um, oh, that might not fit. I might have to snap that. Oh, these are cool. These like brainy looking celosias. They're red, those are kind of nice. Something different in there. So now I'm kind of just looking for extra empty space. Like if I see any empty space in the, in the mold, then I'll just, you know, throw, throw some more of whatever in. Pink straw flower, we could do pink straw flower. Adoratum, it's kind of cool. Oh yeah. Black Knight Scabiosa. All right, so I think they're pretty full. Kind of just go through them a little bit so you can see each of them. I think they're a little full. If we, um, when we pour the resin in and we think we need to add some more flowers, then we can do that. Um, I usually, 
end up having to do that. So next step is, we got all the flowers in, next step is I'm gonna mix up our resin and pour it in. A little resin pouring station in my basement. Um, I just have to put on a pair of gloves because it can get extremely sticky and it does not come off your hands for like for the rest of the day. And so I just always make sure that I have gloves on before I um, touch this stuff. So um, I get a beaker like this and it goes 200 and 400. So I pour in equal parts. I pour first to the 200 and then the other thing I pour up to the 400. So it's equal parts. So I take one of them, doesn't really matter which one you do, do, and then I pour up to the 200, okay? Then I take the other one, the green one, and I pour up to the 400. Then I take like this plastic uh, knife and I stir it really good. Just stir it for forever. Then I try to pay attention to the sides really well. Like kind of, you know, get the sides like with my knife, like scrape it like that. And then the bottom too, as I'm stirring it. I think that's good. <laughs> All right, now we'll go pour it in. So when I pour it in, I just scrape my knife off like that. And then I start up, you know, in the corner. And then I just kind of pour it in all over. I try to pour it like directly on the flowers so they have a chance to like kind of, you know, get, get down in there and wet. So I just kind of do that. So make sure it's all nice and full and covered. That's probably good on that one. And then I just keep doing that. I think I can do like with um, one thing, uh, one beaker full of resin, I think I can do like four sun catchers. So I have to keep, you know, pouring or mixing, you know, mixing the resin because this won't do all of them. That's good. Okay, this is the mold I've never done before, so I'm kind of excited to see how these ones turn out. I'll show you when I get all of them filled um, what the next step is so you don't have to keep watching me stir up more resin. <laughs> okay, I got all the resin um, into them now, so now what I do, or now what I do is I, um, still have one glove on in my knife and I go back through like this and just like poke all the flowers down into the resin so all of the flowers are like submerged into the um, resin mix so they're all nice and wet and pushed down it takes a little while <laughs> to do it by the end of it my hand is very very tired and I like feel like my hands gonna fall off because I because you're just constantly doing this motion for a while probably about I don't know I think it takes me about a half an hour or so to push them all down maybe maybe a little longer I'll like look for spots too that if they're not as full then I usually will have um, a glove not on this hand and I'll just grab something like right now I'm using Celosia so if there's like an empty, probably can't see it, but up here in this corner of this butterfly, there's like a little empty spot that I don't really like. So I'm just, I'll go back through. So I always have like flowers in my hand that doesn't have a glove on. And if it, if anything needs a little extra, then I just put it in and make sure it's all nice and full. So that first one looks pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with how that one is looking so I'll go on to the next one so I'll kind of show how about I do it in fast motion <laughs> I don't know if that makes dizzy but I'll do it in fast motion so you can see it still <laughs> Oh, 
All right, here's what they look like with all the um, resin um, in them and all pressed down. They're, you know, obviously really wet right now. So we'll wait for them to dry for 48 hours and then take them out of the molds and drill a hole in them and tie a little um, string around them and get them um, finalized. They're really wet, but just kind of, you know, random, random flowers in there. All pretty much the same flowers, just kind of, you know, a little different. I'm really excited to see how the moon ones turn out since that was our first pour with those. All right, well, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me um, pour the sun catchers and kind of that process of how that works. And I think this movie might be getting kind of long, so I might have to do a part two um, and show you the next part um, of how I like drill a um, drill hole in it and put a burlap around it and stuff like that and see how they turn out. So um, I hope this was interesting and you enjoyed it and I hope you're having a really great day. So okay, alright, thank you. Um, until next time, bye.